Hello, welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Ball Games. Here we have Nick on a control list. Actually, not going to be Stone Blade. It's going to be Blue White Control. No Stone Forge package in this one. He's got some fun stuff, which we will see as this unfolds. David on Burn. A really weak opening here. No creature to apply early pressure. So far, just a chain lightning to the face on turn two. Not the speed that Burn needs. Not sure if he had to mull or not. This may actually be David's first tournament ever. And able to play alongside all of the other Legacy decks with Burn. It's a perennial playable deck in Legacy. And I'll tell you, this is the type of deck that uh, David would kind of hope for. Nick trying to make this concept work. White control list. And as you figure out your mana base, the composition of threats and answers, all of that, that's the type of situation that Burn is very, very happy to take advantage of. If you stumble at all, they can get you out of there as early as turn three. It's not one of the fastest decks in the format, but it certainly punishes bad draws. And it looks like a Monastery Swift Spear along with a Lightning Bolt. Our set Parter of Veils. I've fallen behind here as I get my slideshow going. That is a big one. And if you have not been playing in paper, you may not have seen the impact of this card. Triumph of St. Catherine. Just an absolute house. A 5-5 five, five lifelinker that miracles for two mana. And uh, that means if you've played with miracles before, you know you can set that stuff up for your opponent's turn. Be able to throw that out in response to being attacked. Uh, or just during the end step when you're more happy to fight. Keeping your mana open for other answers. Triumph of, Triumph of St. Catherine here. This is a terrifying card. Ooh, exquisite firecraft to the face. So I don't actually like this situation. So this is an uncounterable spell. You have two or more incense or sorceries in your graveyard. It's going to be uncounterable. Yeah, I think this is this is going to be a informative sequence right here. So lava spike to the face and swinging. Nick is down to just three. David does have the fire blast, but Nick has the force of will for it. From a theory perspective, I would much rather see Lava Spike and Fire Blast thrown out first. And uh, that does involve floating mana, so that might actually be a, a thing to consider. Uh, for new players, they may not be aware that you can actually float mana when you're not casting a spell. So for Fire Blast, you can tap your two mountains, sacrifice them both in order to play the Fire Blast and still have two red mana available for other cards. But if you can get your opponent down to four or less life, that Firecraft will actually finish the game. Instead, Nick able to easily brush aside that final Fire Blast. Play Fire Blast and a Lava Spike that forces him to use the Force of Will earlier. Has to make the correct read and play around the exquisite firecraft. Usually it, it's going to be the last card that you play from your hand. And now this is completely lost. The roiling vortex on the other side there, preventing Nick from gaining life. A little bit of a sequencing issue there. Definitely want to bounce that Roiling Vortex pre-combat and gain the 10 life. Now Eidolon coming down. In firm control here. Tefiri, such a strong magic card. Even against a deck like Burn. Just making it so they have to play out all of their cards during their main phase. That makes it really difficult to play around your potential answers. 
If you can throw out some instant speed burn during a control player's end step on tap, throw some more at their face, that forces them to deal with all of your threats with the same set of resources instead of letting them get that on tap step and the extra draw, be able to just bat aside both attacks. You kind of just turn it into one lunge for the throat. Types of sequences that you get refined as you play burn more and more. Precision with the deck is actually really important. I would say burn is, it's kind of a combo deck in, in a way. I mean, the combo is getting like 20 points of burn together with the cards in your hand, as, a, as opposed to like fast mana and a single card that does the finishing blow like Tendrils of Agony. But I mean, it is to a degree a combo deck and to the degree that it's a combo deck, it does punish kind of imprecise play and it's more forgiving than your typical combo deck. I mean, there's no easier match in Magic than a bad combo player. I mean, if they misplay and kill themselves, I mean, you could have been playing with a ham sandwich, you still win. So that's kind of the, the trade-off with Burn, is it's a little bit more easy to play, but it is going to punish you if you don't make the precise plays. So that game one, for example, totally... There were chances there if Nick doesn't force of will the fire blast, then Exquisite Firecraft cannot be force of will, and he actually wins the game there. And control players, depending on how familiar they are with burn, the, the kind of basic building blocks of how to play control would tell you to save your counter spell for the spell that's actually going to kill you, not the thing that just moves you closer a low life total because you can potentially regain life you can potentially stabilize and be totally fine exquisite firecraft really breaks that and makes it so your opponent now has to start expending resources earlier on so you know if they had for example a ponder or brainstorm in their hand that they need to pitch to force of will now they no longer have the ability to use that to set up a triumph of saint catherine and have a much smoother draw as a result of using the resources it, it forces them to kind of waste those cards earlier for fear of not being able to counter those final cards. I am a fan of Firecraft in Burn for that reason. Before it was printed, I would actually run cards like Sulfuric Vortex in the sideboard and often bring them in against Control, even if it didn't have a ton of value, just because it was uncounterable and you could potentially deal the final two points of damage with it. With Spirit doing some work, Rift Bolt has been suspended. A little bit of a scary play. Passing the turn to a deck that does run Teferi. They could potentially jam a Teferi here. He, I guess you'd bounce the Swift Spear and force them to replay it, and then the Rift Bolt would not be able to be cast. You would still have to fade down, or what is, is it fading? Let me know in the comments what it is when you remove time counters, suspend counters, I suppose. Uh, you remove the counter during your upkeep. It triggers that you have to play it. Teferi says, no, you can't. Stays in exile on the rest of the game. Here's a reader. Have Staff of the Storyteller. This two mana kind of mini JM Day Tome. When it enters the battlefield, you get a 1-1 one, one spirit. Whenever you create one or more creature tokens, you put a story counter on it, and you can pay a white, move a story counter to draw a card. You were the critics going up top. In lightning. Life total dissipating. See here now using a force of negation. Ooh, and a pyroblast back. Got a little bit of a, a counter battle here. I don't actually like Pyroblast very much in Burn. They work out in this particular instance. In general, I would much rather just have another Burn spell. 
Your opponent's sitting there at three life and all you have in hand is a pyroblast. He would much rather that it was a, even a lava spike. There may be some matchups where that wouldn't be the case. Uh, for example, a uh, versus sneak and show specifically or omni show where you have a omniscience and a show and tell to potentially counter uh, fire blast doing the final four damage there we go david pulling out game two forcing a game three fire blast when your opponent's at four life and tapped out classic classic burn just how you draw it up but for the most part your Red Elemental Blast or Pyro Blast is going to be defending a burn spell. Typically, those are going to do three damage. There are the outliers with the Fire Blast and potentially Price of Progress, though, as we said, probably not even in the deck after game two versus Nick, all those basics. But if you're just defending a three damage burn spell with it, then you would just be better off with an additional burn spell. Much greater utility there. Want to get into the situation where you're trying to counterspell like your opponent's cantrips, brainstorm, and ponder with your pyroblasts. I mean, just not what burn is set up to do. That's dragging the game out, and the longer the game goes, the worse it's going to be for burn. Want to actually intentionally drag the game out. You are trying to take their lunch money and go quickly as possible. Basic Island into Ponder for Nick immediately. Digging, he sees, I believe, a Sword to Plowshares and another land, so looks like he's actually happy enough with the resources he has in hand. Looking perhaps for some answers. Cards like Hydroblast, Flusterstorm, kind of one-mana cards that can interact with Burn at a premium. The longer the game goes, the better things are going to look for Nick. Lava Spike kicking things off. And we got the staff back again. So gets a 1-1 body in this situation, getting a 1-1 body. And like a fluster storm on top. Like actually chumping with the body. Going to try and keep as much life as possible. Another spirit entering means both of those get additional counters. So he's got three potential card draws available to him. And all sorts of burn being thrown at the face. Monastery Swift Spear is involved here. Like we may have a Swords to Plowshares incoming. A basic island. And going to be a fluster storm on the chain lightning. Ooh, supreme verdict on top of the library versus a draw with two creatures. Nick has access to white mana. This is going to be a really graphic turn. Lava spike and Rift Bolt, looking to do some more damage. Misses his white mana, however. Wow, that is a crucial draw step. Well, not draw step. He knew he was drawing the Supreme Verdict. That was a crucial turn. If he had the land in hand, he was going to be fine. Orsa Will on top of the library. Not the best card to see there. Down to just four. Of course, it will would have been something to use earlier, as it is now, facing down almost lethal with what's on board. Any burn spell is going to prowess and mean that the creatures will deal lethal. It's 
sends with both. Got a swords to plowshares, taking out the goblin guide after it puts a white source into Nick's hand. Fire blast to the face. Who about the force of will actually has to pitch that supreme verdict, however. Two damage coming through. So again, kind of a dicey one turn clock situation. He draws a burn spell. It has to be countered. And the prowess trigger would be potentially lethal. Not sure if we got the one damage from the force of will. He started the turn at four. Started at four, force of will to go down to three. Would have taken damage. I think he might be at one. Prismatic ending takes out the swift spear. Nick just holding on. Got another card draw from the staff. Anything is lethal from here. Ashes in. Those staffs all out. Get three extra cards out of them for a total of seven mana. Cycling Shark Typhoon, the way to get counters on there. A Lava Spike, Rainstorm in response. Gonna trigger the Miracle. One. He should leave that revealed in his hand, essentially. Put two back. If he can survive this lava spike, Triumph of St. Catherine would actually stabilize completely. So Brainstorm is resolved. Triumph also resolving. And now a Fluster Storm. So we have Brainstorm, Triumph. Yeah, the original burn spell. And the fluster. Oh, and it connects. That may just be it right there. There's really so little that David can draw to bring himself back into that game. He suspends a rift bolt. I actually don't like that play. I think you've got to hold on to the rift bolt there and potentially cast it along with a chain lightning or lightning bolts to kill this triumph of St. Catherine. There's no hard... That's going to work here, right? Because he's going to go up to 11, down to 8, and he's only got the three basic lands. So even a price of progress only has the three non-basic lands. So even price of progress wouldn't be lethal here. I think you have to kill the Triumph, but this, the second one joining the fray is just ridiculous. I mean, there was a perhaps small chance to kill one and stabilize, but you're not going to deal 10 damage. This is a wrap. As Nick stabilizes in classic control fashion with the new Triumph of St. Catherine. And props to David for stepping up to his first Legacy Tournament. Awesome to see him and hopefully plays a lot more. If you have any good burn tips for him, leave them in the comments.